This video is about emancipation, which should be distinguished from, but thought about as kind of in a complementary polarity with individuation. Um, but emancipation is basically what it sounds like. It's um, becoming free or uh, achieving a kind of power or status uh, that you seek. And um, uh, as with sovereignty and hierarchy, which I've discussed in previous videos, um, depending on what platform you're looking at this on, maybe not on this platform, I'm kind of just laying them around as Easter eggs, but they're, they're pretty much all on YouTube. If you're watching this on YouTube, you can see those. Um, or if you're watching this elsewhere, you can go to YouTube. Um, I lost my train of thought for a second. Uh, there are, you know, personal, social, there's like first person, second person, and third person elements to emancipation. And basically, um, you know, the, the, the first person version is simply, you know, what what is it to, you know, <laughs> to just be succeeding um, at, uh, uh, you know, bring bringing the thing into the world that is yours to bring into the world. And on a collective level, it's more of a political thing, right? It's sort of like, um, it's ba basically coextensive with the civil rights, um, sort of, um, you know, give, give, giving birth to a new subjectivity, um, and uh, in the sort of third person technical sphere, I mean, this this really is, I, I guess, kind of the vision of like um, arriving at uh, arriving at a planned economy that uh, satisfies everybody's needs, basically. And so one one that's one one that can succeed at that. Um, and uh, so the, so I'm, I'm mainly going to talk about the personal side of emancipation in this video. And the thing about it is that there are really two degrees of emancipation. And um, they come from, respectively, psychoanalysis and Christianity. And um, the, it's not, not just respectively so much, but like um, in tandem. So, so basically, um, in uh, there's you, you can arrive at what I call transcendental emancipation through, I would say, either psychoanalysis or religion. Um, to actually break free from a um, status of like being enslaved, uh, being kind of in a self-destructive spiral or uh, being caught in a um, destructive situation that is also self-destructive. Um, but transcendental emancipation only gets you so far. And, and one path to that is religion. The other path to it is psychoanalysis for reasons I don't, I'm not gonna explain right this second. Maybe I will later in the video, but, um, and then once you've sort of arrived at the, um, a sort of steady state in one, then um, the resources from the other come in and it's possible to conceive of hylogenic emancipation. And basically, I think transcendental emancipation is um, like, it's the ability to sort of live, like to, to, to live a, um, to, to live a life that is productive with a certain 
satisfaction, but um, maybe it's still sort of subject to an overall horizon that is not good for civilization. Um, so like, you know, it's possible to live a happy life serving a, a, a bad cause, <laughs> basically. Um, and what hylogenic emancipation is, and it's, it's much more difficult, um, much more speculative, you know, maybe it's not even possible, but it's conceivable that um, by, by sort of perhaps both uh, sharing in those two techniques, um, it's possible to actually go against the grain of the, um, or say, say go against the flow of civilization in its sort of darker trajectory and actually find fulfillment in, um, you know, presenting a, a vision of um, heaven from the ground up. Um, which is, uh, as you probably know, something that is of interest to me that I try to do. But, um, you know, my attitude towards it is very democratic. Um, I'm more interested in the process of kind of having this mindset than in, um, you know, spreading my own particular vision, although I do believe in it. And, um, yeah, so there's two, th th there's two directions um and they and they can be combined what i'll say for now uh by way of kind of introduction i guess uh is just that not the introduction to this video but to the, the topic this is as the introductory video to the topic is that there are really three very basic but crucial elements to emancipation so if you take for granted sovereignty, that you are already um, emotionally free in some way, which is to say, to some degree, you have rendered your uh, true desire to yourself. You, you know, you accept that that's what it is, and you're able to have your actions motivated by it, uh, at least to some degree, more so than... Um, uh, heteronymous sources of desire, uh, you know, enslavements to other people or their agendas or addictions to drugs or entertainment or whatever. Um, you've arrived at that, and then with hierarchy, you sort of um, entered some kind of social space where you are you know, your, your deepest desire is also resonating with um, some, some kind of cluster of other congruent uh, drives uh, in, in other people where you're sort of um, in good faith able to, you know, wor work with others or inspire others, mutually inspire one another, that kind of thing. Um, but then... Uh, Emancipation, as distinct from individuation, is all about um, conscious, uh, conscious realization as opposed to unconscious realization, uh, which is what individuation is about. And so with conscious realization, it's a matter of, you know, like, let's say you just have a goal. Uh, you know, probably have a couple of different goals. And there's first the question of, you know, do I know what I need to know to achieve this goal? Um, you know, so learning, uh, you know, and if not, uh, what are the uh, 
tactics, right? Like, what do I need to learn skills? Do I need to absorb knowledge of some kind that isn't a skill? Um, do I need to find somebody who has a skill or has knowledge, right? It's sort of just like going from having a true will to having a true will, having some kind of like safe environment for sharing that true will to then um, kind of plant, planting a stake in the ground of sort of, uh, you know, what finding the ends, finding the means to that end. Um, so that, that's one thing, very significant. The second one is um, uh, planning your time. So, uh, you know, we're beings uh, with a temporal being as well as a spatial being. And, uh, you know, you can do sort of do your best to imagine what, you know, the next five years of your life or whatever is going to be like. That is in some ways hard in this era uh, when everything is so, everything is changing so quickly that, you know, it's like uh, five years five years from now, like, well, you know, will, I, will I be dead? Will I be uploaded? You know, I, I, you know, it's, it's, it's anyway, but so you can't really let thoughts like that, uh, get in the way because that's, that's kind of, kind of future tripping. Um, so imagine, you know, okay, let's say in three years time, I want to do have this achieved um, in this realm. So, so it's like you you sort of separate out what your different goals are qualitatively, you know. So, that, like for me, I sort of have have a lane for my music, for my uh, philosophical writing, for my art. Those are different lanes, and then um, you know, in in overall goal for each of those by a certain time period and then um you know planning backwards from there kind of dividing that goal into steps along the way um you know down to like uh the really immediate future uh and then sort of ha you know ha having that kind of ideal um goal process influence what you're going to do on a given day differently um you know so uh you know putting aside uh in incentives that are like more like fruitless or whatever and uh you know um scheduling and doing other stuff that uh won't really bear fruit for weeks or months or even years you know um so you know that's an just like the first thing these are kinds you know these you know these are in very very basic self-help books and that kind of thing but they're so you know it's it's like it's like cliches generally it's like um it's very difficult to remember to actually do these things so in the third thing um which is kind of in two parts, is basically um, in any given moment, you know, in any given day, uh, uh, ha have a kind of meditative attitude towards, towards the total picture and towards the, uh, you know, the, the finitude of the situation that you're in. Um, as regards these overall goals, and because um, uh, you know, in any, th this is a point that's pretty psychedelic to really think about. Though we take it for granted because it's so familiar that, you know, like like all humans are this kind of nexus between um, multiple different situations that are ongoing 
you know, that, that we don't fully understand, that we don't know how to deal with, um, we don't know how they're going to go, uh, and we're not sure what to prioritize, um, or what the consequences of our actions will be, and, um, uh, but you know we we have these kind of daily cycles because because we sleep and the sun goes down and that kind of thing where like we sort of reemerge and uh you have the opportunity during that day to either continue giving birth to this this project or not um and uh uh you know there are there are specific decisions to make um, about who you're going to spend your time with, about how you're going to react to certain situations. Um, and then, so that's kind of part A of the um, finitude aspect. And then part B is that um, uh, as you go through a process of this kind, um, trying to learn something from it. Uh, so that you don't repeat mistakes or just, you know, so that you now have more information about whatever situation you were involved in or just have you have more information that you happen to get from that situation. Um, and, uh, yeah, on the personal level, uh, uh, oh, because that information may cause you to refine your conception of what your true will is. And um, this, this is actually the, uh, I think it's, the, this is the fundamental idea in uh, Reza Negoristani's philosophy. Um, uh, people really tend to focus on the, the aspects of it that are uh, super cerebral and that are all about artificial intelligence or cognitive science. Um, but, you know, the the, uh, the key, I mean, it's, and it's not just in Reza, it's also in German idealism, and it's also, um, like, it's it's just, it's a very deep, it's, again, it's just one of these things that's it's easy to kind of say and make it sound trivial. It's also easy to say in a way that makes it sound profound, but makes it like to actually couch it in such difficult language in order for people to take it seriously that you actually r raise the cost of entry too much for most people to really get it. But, to, you know, just like I'm trying to kind of find a place between those two points where it's like, you know, you can in an elaborate way, you know, even like writing things down, uh, you know, conceive of how you're refining your overall goals based on limited experiences that you're having. And um, last thing I'll say for now is that you know that this is the meaning of human finitude. You know, finitude, the difference between me and God is um, it comes down entirely, possibly entirely, I maybe entirely, quite to a large degree to the fact that I have a perspectival experience that is limited to, you know, the ideas in my mind, the people I know, and um, the sort of stretch stretch of time that I'm aware. And, um, and, you know, I have my little sort of pod of reality. And, and that that's my limitation, you know, it doesn't mean that my soul isn't immortal. Maybe it is, maybe it isn't. It doesn't mean that I'll actually, you know, live forever on this plane because of technological changes. Maybe I will, maybe I won't. Uh, those, those, those things, I mean, I guess the fact that they are conceivable is important, but uh, they're not fundamentally relevant to the idea of human finitude. Finitude is just that I should focus on what's going on in my surroundings based on 
my true dreams um, and that I should uh, not focus on things that I don't know about. Uh, so, uh, you know, that also means I shouldn't be overly attached to um, certain aspects of the horizon of my world that uh, might be threatened by me realizing my dreams. Um, and and that's, that's something I've dealt with a lot, actually. It's just sort of like not... Um, being almost afraid to sort of step into who you really are and um, and ha having that fear actually kind of cause you to like unconsciously sabotage your endeavors um, which is a kind of uh, um, which is a kind of future tripping or a kind of um, just, just ha having your mind somewhere else and similarly uh, being too obsessed with forcing things that you think you want to happen to happen right there's there's this I am finite God is infinite um, you know God is real God is conscious I have a relationship with God and um, as as I'm playing my part in um, the unfolding of God's will for me you know God is kind of collaborating on that and um, and a big aspect of my part is to not to not rush God, and to not close doors that God opens. Uh, to put it in the, the theological or the theistic frame. So, um, and this kind of personal realization thing maps on exactly, I think, to politics, um, except that instead of me. Um, it's it's us so uh, maybe I'll talk more about that specifically in a different video